So hey everybody, there's a article that just came out uh, that I want to kind of talk a little bit about because there is something very, very strange with a lot of these exclusive Gundam model kits that are coming out. So if we take a look at this article, there are three Gundam base, a limited edition Gunpla that are on sale in November. Really cool, right? But here's the full article. The three mobile suits that are released is the Exia 00 and the Quanta. Now, why is this kind of weird? Well, what I think is kind of odd about this is that they're pitching this as this brand kind of new thing. And I see no difference between this and what was released back in um, the Gundam convention thing. Um, what do you call it? Gundam Expo. There you go. Wow, I am totally blanking for some reason. So I see no difference between these and the Gundam Expo exclusives. No changes in the decals, no changes in the mold. You do get this really cool base though, if you are going to use the base. So if you were just gonna have it stand there, then that'd be kind of cool. If you're gonna do an action scene or using an action base, mm, this is probably gonna go into your box of parts. So here's the thing though, this is not even new for Gundam Expo because these kits actually released sometime in like 2013 or 14 back in the older Gundam Expos. So these look cool, not gonna lie, and they look really great. The problem is these things have saturated the market so much that normally you can tell when a Gundam is either really popular or in really high demand and just in really low supply when you see their value increase. I don't see the value of these model kits increasing anytime soon. And that's kind of, well, a problem because these kits are pitched as being limited edition kits. You need to get them now because they're not gonna be available later. But in the same way how these are retailed at about $30, I still see model kits or these model kits that you can buy for about $30. Now, this is kind of alarming because either people buy these because they truly believe they're limited edition, and so they try to buy them right away or go out of their way to buying them, um, or uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I mean, it's, it's almost like deceptive in a way because these people are trying to buy these model kits because they think they're limited edition but instead they turn around and see that they really aren't limited edition. And for the collector's market, this is absolutely terrible. You're putting in all this time and money and effort in order to get something that you believe is truly limited edition, truly worth your time, truly worth your money, and it ends up not being the case. Or you're trying to buy it as some sort of investment because you know that's gonna increase in value later on, and so maybe you wanna sell it for a little bit of a higher price. Now, Conversely, this is really great for people like me who just never buy kits, to be completely honest, until the very last moment. Because say I wanna buy these kits later on, sometime down the line, I don't have to worry about this. This is one more kit on my giant list of kits that I can just scratch right off as not being a priority because I know they will always exist. There's such a saturation of these kits on the market that it's almost not even considered limited edition. It's basically just a regular kit at this point. And if at any time I want to buy this kit, I can go ahead and buy this kit. There's no problem. Actually, I can say this: these trio of kits. I would know this mostly because I have this kit sitting at home in the box. And I thought it was going to be a really cool model kit that would raise in value at some point in time. But believe you me, it's still floating around $35 to $40 because it is always being sold. Almost at every convention I've been to in the last like four years or something like that, I've always seen the Double O Riser, clear Trans Am version. Double O Quanta, clear Trans Am version. Uh, you know, Exia, clear Trans Am version. I've seen these kits so many times. Um, and I mean, they're, gr they're good kits. I understand why Bandai would want to continue making these, continue selling them because they're good molds, one. They look cool, two. They're very popular with people, three. And it helps to kill that third market, the third party markup. Um, so 
maybe this is just precedent for what Bandai is trying to do. And you can see this with the P Bandai website where they're really cutting out the middlemen. They're really dropping those profits and they're right, really trying to maximize their own profits because if they can sell directly to the consumer, they can get them hooked on a particular way of doing things. They don't have to sell to a middleman and whatever profits that they make, they make. So these are just my thoughts on these three kits. I'm not sure if this is even newsworthy, but I feel like it does address a couple of really interesting points on the direction that Bandai is trying to go in terms of just stomping out the middleman markets and how the relationship between the regular mom and pop shops that you'll see at things like uh, conventions or you know your brick and mortar stores down the street and what the relationship with Bandai will be going forward into the future. So I'm really interested on in seeing how we can cover that uh, because I do have a lot of friends in the industry. I just don't know um, if they will be negatively impacted by all of these uh, predictions that I'm making. Um, but anyway, thanks very much for tuning in to this article or for this video. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, feel free to like and subscribe to the video if you found this content really interesting. I hope to see you all next time. Talk to you later.